Hello, my name is Bayer DeWald, and in this video I'm going to compare and contrast SQL Server clustering and SQL Server availability groups. Before we go into discussion of clustering and availability groups, I'm going to just list and quickly describe the high availability solutions that we have at our disposal from the oldest to the newest. Transaction log shipping takes a backup of a transaction log and applies that transaction log to a secondary database. Replication moves transactions. It applies the transactions that happen on the primary server to the secondary server. But it doesn't do so through transaction log. It applies the same transactions through the execution of stored procedures that live on a secondary server. Replication is typically more appropriate for scalability, but there are some environments that use it for high availability. Clustering has a shared set of disks, and it's a shared set of disks between two or multiple nodes of a cluster. And clustering essentially protects us from the hardware level failures other than the disk failure. Database mirroring is a one step above log shipping. It does the same exact um, function. It performs basically the same exact function as log shipping, but it is baked in, meaning that you don't have to manually restore the uh, transaction log backups on the secondary server. Mirroring um, is, as I say, just kind of an evolution of the log shipping, and then availability groups is basically an, an evolution of mirroring. Availability groups is a shared nothing in technology, shared nothing technology where you have two or multiple nodes that do not share a disk, they do not share you know, CPU um, cores, nor do they share memory, and they do not share anything. There are two separate, two or multiple separate nodes, which are grouped together um, as a means of assuring high availability for databases. So all of these are used to mitigate some sort of failure and to continue operations. Some of these options, such as log shipping, require manual intervention on the DBA's part or the application management teams. So for example, with log shipping, if you do apply the last transaction log backup to the secondary node and then you want to fail over, you have to manually change your application to point to the secondary node. Other options, more uh, recently implemented options such as clustering and availability groups, they support automatic failover and no application changes are necessary. Do keep in mind though that uh, installing SQL Server out of the box does not implement any of these solutions. Each of these requires certain level of training, certain level of knowledge and experience. So none of these solutions are out of the box. So let's focus on clustering for a second. As I said before, it requires a set of shared disk resources. You have at least two nodes, possibly more than two. But each database is only available on a single node. Now do you note that you have an option to run multiple SQL Server instances. So let's say you have a three node cluster. Each of them could own um, a SQL Server instance, but there is no duplication of the database. So each database only exists on a single instance. And each one is active on a single node. Now, when you set up multiple instances, if you do uh, decide to use multiple instances with, with clustering, each instance will need a dedicated set of disks for your data, for your transaction logs, and for tempdb. Clustering is not very simple to extend. There is a concept of geographic clustering or geo-clustering. 
meaning that cluster nodes could reside in different physical locations. But architecting and implementing such clusters is difficult. In case of the failover, the new active node will have to take the ownership of multiple resources. And that includes the disks. Remember we said we had the data disk, transaction log disk, TAMPV disk, etc. So the ownership of those disks has to be transferred. And also the distributed transaction coordinator, SQL Server, and SQL Server agent. Now, transferring the ownership of the resources and starting up SQL Server service as well as SQL Server agent service will take some time. And hence, failover will take at least a few minutes. But clustering requires new application changes um, at the time of failover. Clustering, uh, one of the downsides of clustering is that it does not offer any kind of scalability for a single database, nor does it provide any kind of performance advantage. So if you find that your application is not performing well on a standalone um, SQL Server instance, you know, going with clustering is not going to offer you any advantage. And what about availability groups? Availability groups have shared nothing um, approach. So there is no shared disk. Each node continuously runs SQL Server and SQL Server agent services. Databases exist not on one, but on at least two, possibly multiple nodes. We can group databases on a single instance or install multiple instances and one for each availability group. What do I mean by that? So let's say that you have three or four databases, for example, that, that all need to fail over at the same time. Well, you can have you know, hundreds of databases potentially on a single instance of SQL Server. Um, they don't always have to fail over at the same time, right? So if you have a group of a few that you need to fail over, you can put them in a single availability group. So within a single instance of SQL Server, you have multiple availability groups, or you can have just one. With earlier versions of SQL Server, availability groups require two nodes to be on the same Windows Server failover cluster. For read-only secondaries, which I'll discuss in just a second, you do not have to be on the same cluster as the primary um, SQL Server instance anymore. So with SQL Server 2017, I believe, um, we have an option now to implement clusterless secondaries, meaning that secondary nodes can reside on a standalone machine somewhere um, that is not part of the original cluster. And notice that if you do have a clusterless availability group, you do not have the option of automatic failover, only the manual failover. Now, does availability group work better than uh, clustering in terms of uh, performance? Well, potentially, potentially. So you have the option of distributing or scaling out your read-only queries. Now remember that if you do have, uh, well, when, when you set up the um, secondary instances, they're always read-only. You cannot modify data on the secondary instances. So when you set them up, you have the option of configuring the read-only routing, which means that you can round robin your requests, your uh, query requests that are read-only. Uh, they can go to the primary node or they can go to any of the secondary nodes. And you have the option of uh, specifying exactly how those read-only requests are to be routed. We can add nodes to an existing availability group relatively easily. So unlike clustering, which is fairly complex to expand, especially implementing geo-clustering is difficult, with availability groups, it's, it's a whole lot easier to add local nodes or even remote nodes. Secondary nodes continuously replay transactions that occur on the primary. So secondary nodes essentially do the same thing as what database mirroring used to do. Um, and before database mirroring, we had the log shipping. The log shipping was a manual process, whereas availability groups was a continuous continues replay. 
So as I already mentioned, we have the option of automatic failover and manual failover. Manual failovers are useful when we are uh, doing patching, meaning that we apply service packs or cumulative updates to SQL servers. Unlike clustering, manual failovers are managed through SQL Server Management Studio or Transact SQL, whereas with clustering, you have to use the Windows Failover Cluster Manager tool. The distributed AG is similar to what we have with geo-clustering, meaning that the secondary nodes are in a remote location. Distributed AG is much easier to set up than geo-clustering. It is essentially a distant set of secondaries joined, to, joined together into another availability group. Much like clustering, AGs do not require any kind of application changes at the time of failover because your applications point to a listener and not to an individual node. Failovers are usually very, very quick compared to clustering because they do not require taking ownership of disks, starting up services, none of that. And as I already mentioned, availability groups offer scalability for read-only activity. So what are some of the advantages? Clustering could be less expensive because you don't duplicate your data, your database, uh, each database is basically only on a single instance. It's not a distributed system, so potentially it could be somewhat easier to troubleshoot. And during failover, the SQL Server agent objects such as jobs and operators and alerts will seamlessly transfer to the newly activated node. With availability group, you have to be very careful to set up the jobs on the primary and secondary and make sure that they only execute on the primary because, as I mentioned before, you cannot change the data on the secondary instances. Availability groups, on the other hand, are easy to extend. They offer read-only scalability. They're, they're also quicker to fail over because of the shared nothing architecture. And they protect against the disk failure, so disk failure does not cause any kind of outage. Secondaries do not have to live on the same Windows Server failover cluster. Disadvantages for availability groups, and those are pro probably a little bit more expensive. As of SQL Server 2019, we cannot include system databases in the availability group. Therefore, the jobs have to be set up on the secondaries um, manually. As I already mentioned, you have to be careful when you set them up to make sure that they only execute in one place uh, on the primary. Um, there are certain things like backups, for example, that you can perform on the secondaries, and that could potentially help you offload some of the traffic from the primary to the secondary. Another disadvantage of availability group would be that it's it does require a full recovery model for every database, whereas with the clustering, you could use the simple or bulk logged recovery model if you wanted to. Clustering disadvantages include lengthier failover, um, more difficult to expand, they do not offer any kind of scalability or protect against the shared disk failure. So essentially, they completely rely on Windows Server failover clustering. So which one do you use? Well, that all depends on your budget, on your requirements, if you need scalability for read-only queries. And also you have to consider if you have lots and lots of SQL Server agent jobs. If so, you know, it's easier to work with the uh, clustering. And if you have a whole lot of databases on the same SQL Server instance, setting up jobs for each database upon creation, adding that to the AG could be tedious but, of course, you can write scripts to automate the process. If you do need help, please reach out um, via bdbaexecutives.com. I hope this video has been helpful to you. And if you do have questions, do reach out to me at this email. Thank you.